Welcome to a brand new Energy Markets Talk. Today I'm joined by Jean-Paul Hagerman, who is director at Anepsis. Jean-Paul, welcome. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Um, well, first to start, uh, what is Anepsis? Yeah, um, Anepsis is uh, primarily um, a company that ha uh, markets a data platform um, where we collect data from all, all over Europe from hundreds of different sources. Um, and, and yeah, um, visualize those to the market uh, and also open them up through an API. Um, and then because we have all the data, we'll also create forecasts and uh, calculate it and uh, invert, uh, yeah, in, invert series um, yeah, to make life a bit easier for, uh, for the analysts. Yeah. Um, apart from that, we also have a, a consultancy arm um, which, which also feeds into our platform. So we do a lot of analysis work uh, on, on bespoke consultancy and that feeds into that platform to get uh, yeah some special uh, special knowledge in, uh, in in that uh, in that respect yeah and, and nowadays I think everybody is interested in uh, energy markets information and energy markets forecasts yeah. I think not not only energy traders maybe is, is there a lot more demand for for market insights compared to let's say a year ago? before the energy markets uh, went upside down? Yeah, definitely. So um, so the energy trading community, uh, you can see an evolution from long-term trading to short-term trading and more, um, yeah, you have more quants in, in, in short-term trading than, uh, than, than in the long-term stuff. So that's, of course, an obvious uh, customer group. But we also do a lot of work for um, for asset owners uh, right. and um, investors for uh, yeah creating helping to create their business plans and optimizations. Um, so yeah, there's quite a lot of uh, a lot of interest there. But we also um, I mean National Grid in the UK and uh, Tenant in uh, in the Netherlands are also customers of ours, and those are TSOs. So yeah, it's quite quite a broad audience. Yeah. And and um, the data uh, you collect, um, where where do you get it from? From from public uh, sources, non-public sources. Yeah, uh, so both. Um, so there's a lot of public data uh, scattered around the internet. Mm. Uh, so TSOs publish data, NCOE publish publishes data. Um, there are weather institutions that publish data, um, and what we do is we uh, so so the value of of of, of that data. Um, is is obvious to everyone, uh, and lots of people collect it themselves uh, because a lot of it is free. Yeah. But the, the value of our product is having everything in one place, so mm -hmm. it's very easy to connect uh, to external so sources once. But if you want to keep that working uh, or yeah, long term, that's a full time job. So what we do is we collect everything from multiple sources, and then open it up for our customers with a with a single API. And that, yeah, we bring everything together in one system. So you can combine data from different sources in different charts and dashboards, but actually you save a lot of time because you only have one single API to speak to if you want to use the data externally. Yeah, so it's, it saves a lot of time if you go to Anepsis instead of collecting it uh, yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we recently organized um, an energy trading conference, the Energy Trading Day. Where you also were one of the presenters. Um, there you presented the, deri um, the derived merit order model. I have to read it <laughs> again uh, for, for uh, day ahead power prices. Um, what's the difference from that model compared to more traditional methods? Yeah, yeah. So, so traditional methods are typically quite binary. Um, they use economic assumptions to determine if a power plant will run at a given price or not. Um, and our new method um, actually uses the abundance of, of behavior data that's available in the market. Um, and what we do is we analyze the, the behavior of market participants. And it turns out that a lot of those behaviors are quite constant uh, in, in, in extreme periods, but also in moderate periods. And um, because you look at the, the actual behavior, you also need less assumptions. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if you use assumptions, they can be wrong or incomplete. Uh, but if you look at behavior, uh, you get very granular, granular results out of the box. Um, 
and that means you can yeah they can use be used to get a better understanding of of different drivers to the market and and why is that so important um so if you try to model every every aspect of the market um the quality of your assumption is for the quality of your assumption sets the quality of your outputs mm. but the less uh, you assume and the more uh, is implied by uh, modeling behavior um yeah the more granular your output becomes so you get a lot more context that way than if you were to yeah to model everything uh, individually yeah yeah well that sounds like a like a great model um does this mean that traditional models perform much worse than than your model um so shouldn't everybody use your model um well i think um this better or worse uh, performance is 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 relative so um I mean, you can look at things like MAPE uh, and, and mean average uh, errors, but um, what is important to understand in, in forecasting is the context. So if if the, the outcome deviates from the forecast, you should have context. Uh, why, yeah, what, what are the drivers? What are, um, yeah, what's behind the deviation and, if you are just have a point forecast, uh, that makes it a lot more difficult to interpret. So a lot of a lot of forecasts are black boxes. Ours actually gives you all of the intermediate results, um, which helps you uh, identify where things go wrong. Um, and I think there's a lot of value in seeing what's behind the model, uh, as opposed to having the model that has the best results for a long time, and then suddenly a market changes and it doesn't work anymore. But yeah, it's a, it's it's a bit of um, a bit of both. So you do need the best model, and of course, I want everyone to use our model. Um, but yeah, it's there's all kinds of things that uh, that feed into into results, and uh, sometimes the in intermediate results are all, are as interesting as the end result. Mm. So there's also some errors sometimes. In, in in your model but but you're saying um absolutely uh, well it's not that bad to have it uh as long as you understand where it came from we're all wrong all the time um the problem is that some people don't know why they're wrong mm -hmm. uh, we can try trace back what caused an error and that's yeah. uh, if if you are a trader looking at the market um what the, the main thing you use to analyze what's going on is deltas so if you don't know what the deltas are that go to into a model then um yeah you're blind after the after the market's run in in our case um you, yeah you get to see what the inputs are you can look at the deltas in the real time screens so you can definitely see um what should be driving your market yeah yeah understand uh, how do you see your model fitting into the future of power trading yeah um so i think the future of power trading is uh it's going to be very data-based you will you will see uh lots and lots of uh people creating different models uh over time and um yeah, it's sort of when you when you go to a doctor and and he tells you you have a heart condition, um, yeah. If if you go to get a second opinion uh, and that doctor says the same thing, you're going to going to get a bypass. If the other doctor says, "Well, I'm not so sure, maybe maybe uh, maybe that was a, a glitch," um, at least you're going to be careful. But you know, okay, I have to look at that, and I think models in in an energy market are, are a lot the same way so if the models agree you know where you have to go you know what you have to do if models disagree um you also know you have to be careful but you can look at what's what's behind those models and what's the most likely outcome um but that requires uh having different approaches in your toolbox so if you uh if you are looking at the future of the of the energy market one of the things 
that I see people doing is using different models from different uh, either different vendors or different approaches, um, and you use them as a sort of portfolio to un to look at the market and uh, and try to understand what's going on. And if everyone agrees, then it's simple. If not everyone agrees, then you have to look under the hood and see what's going on. Yeah. So, are you saying you would you would share your model with uh, with others? <laughs> Well, I mean, um, we would definitely share it with our with our customers. Um, I think make, making it completely open source. Uh, yeah, we do have to make a living, so um, not for yeah. free, uh, at least. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think we wouldn't we wouldn't give it away uh, to everyone. But um, the the idea is for our customers to 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 make to get the most value out of our um, out of our platform. So yeah, we what we do is we share the inputs, we share the assumptions, um, mm -hmm. we share some intermediate uh, outcomes. So you could actually rebuild uh, what we do yourself and and make it better. Um, yeah, you don't want any, everyone using the same forecast. So um, you need some interpretation. And yeah, that's that's what we uh, what we aim to do. Yeah, yeah. Something. So besides. Your uh, besides Anapsis, uh, a question to you personally: um, the the unrest in the market. Do you think this is here to stay? Um, well, you have different different types of unrest. I think geopolitical unrest uh, would be very difficult to comment on. Mm -hmm. um, so there's also midterms coming up in 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 the US as as we speak. Um, exactly. I, I, I mean, I mean the, the huge volatility mainly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. know, but yeah. So the huge volatility is coming from um, from from scarcity caused by uh, geopolitical events. So yeah. you can't in geopolitical events um, we don't forecast them. So no. so it's very difficult to 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 say something about that. Um, what I will say is that it looks if we look at the market, we look at the numbers. Uh, the forward markets are saying. We're going to have to be in this in this territory for at least another three four years, um, and for for winter, yeah, I mean it looks like um, France is having some supply issues. Um, Nuclear is taking a long time to get back. If it gets really cold very quickly, then um, yeah, we'll be in for a for a very bad winter. On the other hand, yeah, um, inter interconnector capacity is not that huge into into france so um while we will see um an uplift of of prices if france gets really into trouble mm -hmm. um the main the main problem will be in france because they just lack capacity and don't have enough interconnectors yeah yeah so yeah it's it, we're in for uh for turbulent times for uh for for, for uh, a while longer um, yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. Look, looking at the way the market is developing, uh, I, I think the need for for services that make sense of this all. Uh, well, your data will, will continue to be very big. So I wish you all the best. <laughs> um, thank you very very much, uh, Jean Paul. Thank and, you. Uh, to our viewers, hope hope to see you next time. All right. See you.